Right, um, there's a chap or lady called Spiderwick, um, just done a vid, so this is really for him or her, um, to do with spiderlings, terrestrials mostly, I believe um, all the collection is terrestrial so far, but I just sort of noticed in the videos that um, he was using a, a taller um, plastic sort of pot that's really more suited to arboreals and the problem with some of our terrestrials is they'll burrow and they'll disappear and then you've got to fiddle around with live food but what, I, what I'll do is I'll just um, show the live food that he'll probably need to use or slightly smaller this is these are second instars I've just got these so it's a good time to do the vid I'm using a cucumber here which they always seem to like you can use orange and uh, spring greens and stuff and there's some uh, Weetabix or um, what are they called um, fish flakes for next and I don't tend to use fish flakes myself but they came with the shop but what you'll have to do um, is if you're uh, spidling um, usually they tend to be about one centimeter to three centimeters in size is you'll have to crush the heads of these crickets if they disappear and you've just brought a a spiling from an sh online shop and you're a new keeper and you're unsure um, squish the head of the cricket or I'll show you some mealworms here now, these are smaller ones um, and I've been using these to feed my little small ones on as well I'll show you the you've got some big ones in here and I wouldn't necessarily use a big one like this look for the really small ones um, you can order your live food um, for my local shop anyway and they're small and get the head and either use some uh, scissors um, or crush it you have to crush it really well because um, crickets and mealworms tend to be quite resilient um, and they'll often sort of come mysteriously come back to life again which is a bit of a worry now they will disappear into your tea's enclosure and they are notorious for sort of disappearing if they're alive and you, and I've done, we've all had it before that we've put something in thinking the tea's going to eat and they don't and you have to faff around digging out the live food because you can't leave live food in with a tarantula if it then molts because the crickets or mealworms can kill the tarantula. Um, generally with roaches, um, this isn't the case, I believe. But then again, I, I just operate I generally don't leave food in for more than say eight hours or overnight you know feed at 10 o'clock and first thing eight o'clock in the morning check the enclosure and make sure the food has been eaten if it's pre-killed of course you know where you've left it you can come back the next day and remove it but just make sure you've crushed the head well so um, we're now going to go on to a few pots and I'll show him the type of um, or her the pots that I use and I've got a few little spiderlings that are problematic. Um, I know, just sent me a message that um, basically some of his have disappeared already. So um, I'll show him a few of mine that have disappeared and um, have a little chat about what I do. Okay, so um, let's go on to some pots and some slings. Right, so when you're dealing with um, terrestrial spiderlings, most of the time, they'll arrive in a spiraling pot like this. Now the problem with this is um, they have a little plastic lid on the top and most time the, the sellers will just put a few prin prick of holes in the top which is okay but it's got no cross ventilation um, and then the holes in the top tend to only just be a few which is okay you know I mean it's fine for um, sending a tea just for overnight or a lot of the time you'll see it shows that you know there's not that much airflow so what I tend to do is if the tea is very small and um, I'll show you an example of one um, or slow growing um, for, so for example yeah you'd include a brachypelma in this if they're quite small like a centimeter you can keep them in a little pot like this um, the problem is you can't get a water dish in there so you just have to occasionally water them so say twice every week with like one pipette which is here, full of water. 
Um, now you can't put any cross ventilation obviously because there, there'll be a bit of substrate in there and you can't sort of drill holes in it when the tea's inside. But you can, when you're doing a bit of husbandry or you're feeding, is take off the lid and add in a few more air holes at the top. Because what will happen is if you overwater, um, because there's no cross ventilation, you'll find that the soil will take ages to dry out. So you've got to be careful not to sort of deluge your spidling in a lot of water but say for example this is half full of substrate it's quite easy to just take the lid off drop in a pre-killed because a lot of the time the little sling for example I've had brachypelmas that will be down the bottom or on a faunafelma they're notorious actually I'm going to show you one in a second but um, notorious for going all the way down there and you'll you most of the time you'll be able to see it but sometimes you can't and they'll be down there so what you do is you drop pre-killed on the, on the top as I've said and then remove it the next day um, obviously if your tea's out and about you can try it with a very small first or second instar and then you know if it eats happy days but I've had a lot of half probably half the time you know mine have disappeared um, and after this we can go up to a size up now I'd always put cross ventilation near the top you can see I've got holes here but you want to leave about perhaps that much substrate and then I've got another bigger one which you could use depending on obviously the size but watch out for your holes for example there my holes are too big um, so a lot of them when they first arrive um, because I've got a few well I mean this is okay for sort of after they've molted say two or three times but um, for example you can use these little pots here now these are actually better and you can see these have got print pricks around them um, so the, again the airflow isn't going to be as good as if you've soldered holes in use a solder iron soldered holes in yourself this was a Lassiodora difficilis now I've got that in a bigger tub which I can show you as well but um, so you can look for these in the supermarket or try the spider shop uh, UK they sell I know they sell these ones they might sell smaller one I mean there's two sizes of these there's this one and then there's this one which is bigger so you perhaps want to go for this one after they've molted a few times but um, I'll now show you some actual spiderlings and in the, in the pots that they're in just to show you um, what might happen I'll have to get this into focus um, so this is an Afonafelma and when it first came it was very very small so I kept it in this and it's only molted I think once perhaps in twice since I got it at the SEAS show which was started this year and I still don't know what's going on with it um, and I don't think I'm going to disturb it although I'm tempted to have a dig of it now I might put that on at the end of the video if I decide to go that route um, and basically this is a sort of another style enclosure I found this one I think it had uh, some kind of cotton buds in it or something but um, so I've got holes at the top and then cross ventilation and then I did put in say an inch or so of substrate I mean the, the sling is actually only a centimetre but inside I've got a water dish which is a Monopoly hotel and then just a bit of substrate and uh, a bit of uh, moss and it's all the way down the bottom somewhere and I might have a look for it but so that's the kind of setup you can do after they've molted once um, very simple but obviously I can get into, because it's wider, I can get into it a lot easier. And uh, if I want to dig it all out, you know, I can dig out parts of the substrate, locate where the T is, check that it's okay, and then obviously replace the substrate. Um, that one has actually got a bit mouldy because um, because it hasn't got quite a good airflow. And, you know, I put a bit of water in it's been quite humid here, so you've got to keep your eye on the humidity. Um, and this is I don't actually know what's in here because I haven't seen it so this is the problem you face with um, your slings uh, food has been disappearing but and I think in here is a Brachypelma Kallenbergi um, again this is a I think it was a smoky bacon and tomato sauce pot so these are actually quite good I quite like these because they're they're quite um, deep so if you do have a bit of a burrow or like like this again cross ventilation and holes in the lid 
And uh, I wonder if you can actually see the tea somewhere. No, but I've got another water dish in here. And I'll show you the type of things that you can use. I can't remember where I got these water dishes from. Um, so there's another little water dish. It's like a little sort of plastic. And I always keep that fill full. And then water every, well, sort of pipette the, the uh, moss sort of once a week. And then the easy thing is, obviously, like if I get one of these crickets or mealworms, I can just plonk it on the top here, make sure it's dead, and then remove it the next day. Because a lot of the time, what will happen is, once you, once you receive a sling, you won't know if it's molten or not. And it's quite difficult to judge um, whether they are going to molt. Usually a, a big fat abdomen will be the indication that it's going to be in pre-molt. But... Um, if you're not sure, just keep using pre-killed. Keep checking every two, three days. Well, we have stings, you can feed them twice a week. Um, some people do once a week, but put pre-killed in twice a week. Um, check that the next morning. Remove, check water. So just, just stay on top of it, basically, until you get a molt. And hopefully, you'll see a molt appear on the surface, if it's a burrower you'll actually see the tarantula itself at some point fingers crossed right that pretty much covers it I think um, there's one little thing I can show you um, oh and some slightly bigger pots now this one's a real cutie and I haven't actually shown anyone particularly um, this tarantula because it's quite rare the other one I showed you was my Fonofelma um, uh, Oaxaca and that one I don't think anyone's filmed yet and this one is one I don't think anyone's filmed so let's go and have a little look at the little chap um, I might put down an extra book now this isn't a great enclosure to be honest so this is a good example of um, sometimes you just have to use what you can find but um, to loads of little holes in the top which I pinpricked but the lid is a bit of a nightmare. Um, now this one is a burrower as well. A Fonofelma species generally tend to be little burrowers. Um, and I've got a different type of substrate in here actually. Usually the uh, substrate blocks are softer stuff and that's what en enables teas to burrow into it. This is a different substrate that I got at a show um, so the tea I don't think has managed to burrow in, but the little chap, I don't know if you can make it out, is a little, it's a little one there, just here, is my little Fonofelma. Um, let's zoom it up a bit more. Uh, be careful this little one. Where are you, sweet pea? Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's taken ages to, uh, molt and to grow. So it's still tiny. I mean, it might even be a dwarf species. I, I don't actually know the details. I need to track down the chap who brings these in from Mexico. Um, what if we can see the little... I don't quite even make him out. It's so small. There you go. You can just about make him or her out. So I've got a Monopoly dish in there. Um, it can... Sorry, we lost it there. It's probably because I was wittering on. But um, you can see the little uh, tea there. It's not moving around much, but um, it's just molted, so we'll uh, put the lid back on. And hopefully uh, show you a feed later on in the week. What did I do with the lid? So there you go. I, I won't water this one down too much because it's a, a sort of desert Mexico species. So just a full Monopoly dish is fine. And then, so once your tea gets bigger, um, this is another one that's disappeared actually. In here, there is an Afonofelma marxi, but where is it? So, this is the problem you face, um, as you can see, cross ventilation, bigger tub. I, mean, I know this has molted, say, three, four times, so um, I might have a little dig. Um, and show you at the end of the vid and see if we can find this one. 
and show you what to do if you're worried about a tea because um, it is a bit of a tricky subject how long do you leave them but generally you just um, leave the trencher to its own devices and just drop in food occasionally um, so yeah just to finish off with a we could do a little feed actually because this one probably will have a meal um, um, so yeah once you're I mean this is quite an easy tea to keep um, Lassiodora uh, I think it's a difficilis but um, so you go to this stage up after they've molted say three times make check check the air holes are big enough and then you can get in a water bottle cap as I've got here which makes life easier it means you don't have to keep checking on the water and I don't want to knock any of these spiderlings so we'll do a quick feed here so this one's uh because they're good eaters I mean your brachypelmas and your phonophelmas will tend to need smaller food than say some of your species for example um your brachypelmas might not take down larger prey but Alassiodora um, which make quite good starter species actually because they're you know quite easy to keep you know they don't really burrow and uh, good eaters but um yeah you want a sort of smaller uh I'll start with a small sort of mealworm I won't give this one a big one because it's quite a fatty already but I've got a little small mealworm here plonk it in and of course it's in primo <laughs> which is quite a good uh, quite a good thing oh no it's not in primo so obviously this one is is it's about four centimeters now and you can see that the abdomen here is a lot larger and that generally would mean that this one is not going to eat much more um, but uh, what I'll do now is leave this one for a good week um, if it was smaller the abdomen was smaller I'll probably just leave it two three days and then try it again um, varied food is good I always think so you know meal one one day and then three days later you know cricket to keep it varied and also keep your keep your um, uh, live food eating varied food as well don't just always give it cucumber mix it up right I think that will be uh, the end unless I decide to show you uh, digging up um, a sort of burrower if you're worried um, I am slightly worried about one of mine so um, I think we'll go ahead and do that and I'll just sort of show you the process of what I do I mean it's pretty much what it is just digging soil out and then being very careful um, and then having a look at the spidling and then obviously uh, leaving it to its own devices but uh, but I think it's worth doing anyway so uh, let's do that another classic example of a disappearing tarantula um, another setup this is a Brachypelma callenbergi in here and as you can see you can't see the tarantula and um, this is a tip I've just discovered now as you lift it up be very careful but I can't really show you unless um what if I can show you if you look underneath I don't know if you can make this out but um the tarantula is I don't know if you can see but there's a little gap there and that's where the tarantula is right down the bottom so be very careful as you do it but if you look underneath sometimes you'll see the T and that's generally a good sign just to see if it will move around a bit and you can try and drop in a little bit of water next to it if you know where it is just to keep it moist so um, yeah that's a Kallenbergi that's okay but it's just been down there for months so um, yeah let's carry on so yeah found my Marxi um, I had to dig out quite a lot of substrate what I'm going to do is replace the substrate I've um, taken out with some softer stuff because I'm not too keen on this harder stuff and uh, just because it's got lots of bits of bark in there and if it's going to burrow I prefer it just in the soft stuff um, and also you know I can see it easier um, but yeah it's a very fat little uh, Fonofelma Marxi um, so obviously in pre -mole and I've disturbed it but um, should be okay so yeah, I mean, this has been two months, but...
but I'm glad to see that it's okay. It was right down the bottom. I'm going to touch it just slightly. Did it move, Sweet Bee? Probably not. There you go. So it's fine. Doing well. Very big abdomen. Huge abdomen. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I'm going to put some more substrate in and put a moss at the top so that it can hide underneath. And This one will just barrel up again and be fine. And hopefully I'll show it you in a couple of weeks when it's ready to eat so yeah um, end of the vid so I've dug up a few which you don't have to do but in two examples this one obviously didn't need to be done but I wasn't too keen on the substrate and um, yeah I was a bit worried about it and again a Fonofelma Marxi I don't have much experience with it I think it's a dwarf um, very slow growing didn't eat much, didn't seem to need much water. So it's good to just see it's okay and looking large. And the, and the, and the other Fonda Felma I've got um, are just molted. So um, it's all good. So yeah, thanks for watching. I probably said that in another bit, but uh, I'll just put this in the middle. Cut, edit, and carry on. Right, so I've got a bit of a problematic upon a film and a bit worried about it so generally I wouldn't necessarily advise doing this just um, leave a burrowing tea to its own devices make sure it's got water occasionally you know give it some pre-kill but in this case I'm gonna have a little um, dig and we'll show you what you you can do but um, so first off I've got a little spoon and then a little pot to put the substrate in. Always make sure you've got replacement substrate. And then we're just going to go very, very gently. Hopefully, you can see this. Yeah, you can. Take out your water dish um, because as you're digging, you don't want anything to fall in on the tea. Um, Monopoly Hotel is very useful. Now, the reason being is I had a little bit of mould in here and I'm a bit worried about where the little chap is so what I'll do is I'll very lightly start taking stuff off and um, what I'm going to do is pause it now and then I'll come back to when it's uh, the action part and then hopefully show you the tea if it's still alive fingers crossed very difficult to spot so I was just very gently taking off little bits of um, substrate at a time and I only got so far before I saw a bit of movement and the freshly malted a Fonofelma uh, Oaxaca down there I might see if I can just take out the malt to show you guys but I'm um, very happy about this because it's it's tiny still this little one I mean this was bought back in January as a one centimeter sling as I said with the Chapala and it's still tiny but it's looking very very cute um, I can just make out tiniest tiniest little malt there I'm gonna try and very gently yeah, sorry sweet bee there's the malt don't know if you can make that out it's tiny Plonk it down there. I'll show you in a second. But it's really, really small. I can't get it off my tongs. So yeah, there's that little one there. Um, what I'll do is I'll just sort of slightly cover it up with a bit of moss. I'm not going to put substrate on it. And then I'll put the water dish back in down here, closest to the camera. And then write it in the book and leave it a week. So this could be the end of the vid. Um, although I'm tempted to have a look for my... Um, Marxy, and if I spot any malt, then I'll do a video. But um, so yeah, this is generally what you can do if you haven't seen your tea for, say, six weeks, and you're worried that it, you know, might be dehydrated. But generally, slings um, and the burrowers know what they're doing. So some people just say, look, leave it, don't touch it, make sure it's got water, and that's fine. So um, and I mean, I could have left this one, and it eventually it would have. Um, probably come to the surface and like you know would have fed it but for some species like these are and brachypalmas um, 
they can burrow for what seems like an eternity. So for this one, I mean, these are funner ones. I've never had them and I haven't seen much husbandry for them online. So in this case, I just wanted to sort of have a look and, you know, um, it's a kind of new, these are kind of sort of, I mean, they are fun of Felmers, but generally um, they're all the same. But I haven't seen, you know, as I said, you know, these uh, Oaxaca and Chapala are, um, are sort of, you know, they, they seem to be really sort of hardy, don't eat much. And they could even be a dwarf species, hence why they're small. So definitely a learning experience for me. Um, and hopefully they'll at some point grow bigger than I don't have to worry about them so much but um yeah so hopefully this will help spiderwick and if there's any problems you can uh, just send me a message and I'll I'll get back to you so thanks for watching everyone uh, tarah